Good day grade 10s. In this lesson you're going to be learning about equations of motion. Now equations of motion are incredibly useful tools. Now we're going to go through them with you. Don't panic the first time you see them. They look a bit scary but once you get used to them you will understand what they are. So the first one is, now lucky for you, you we don't have to learn how to derive them. We just have to learn how to use them. So the first one is Vf is equal to Vi plus A delta T. Delta x is equal to Vf plus Vi over 2 times by delta T. Delta x equals Vi delta T plus a half A delta T squared and Vf squared equals Vr squared plus 2A delta x and V is delta x over delta T. Now that looks really scary but if we go through it nicely and slowly you will see that it's actually pretty easy and I will be going through an example to show you how to use these so don't panic too much. First of all, you don't have to learn them as well, which is awesome. Okay, so now, the VI stands for your initial velocity or first velocity. Your VF stands for final or second velocity. The delta T is the change in time. And delta X is your change in displacement. Okay, so that's pretty cool. VI, initial first VF, final of for a second velocity, delta x, and then obviously your a, it's interesting, I didn't put it in here, it's very weird, your a is obviously your acceleration, I don't know where my head was when I made this, a is acceleration, okay, this one here, I would say don't use, but if you have to use it, if you feel the need, then only, you may only use it for constant or average velocity and that is the just the change in displacement over change in time that is what we've been using at the moment but as soon as you have acceleration included in something it gets a little bit complicated and therefore I'm loath to let you use this because people get it wrong so often but let's go through an example and I'll show you how to use these so first of all we need to make a sketch of the situation if they don't give you a sketch draw one okay you don't have to be an artist you've seen the way I draw doesn't have to be artistic at all but you need to have an idea of what's going on you need to identify a reference point and select a direction because we're working with vectors so you need to select a direction we write down the symbols of the variables and then we allocate the information that we already have then we identify the appropriate equation we substitute and solve for the unknown variable and sometimes sometimes you may have to use more than one equation but let's not panic just yet okay let's look at an example a car is traveling due east it accelerates uniformly covering a distance of 550 meters in 10 seconds and the questions are it is sorry it says it has an initial velocity of 5 what is its acceleration so let's go back and let's do a little picture so we've got a little car and like I said it can be a block on wheels. Okay, a car is traveling due east. So we're going to choose due east as positive because we have started with that. You can choose anything. I tend to choose whatever the initial direction is. We're going left and right. The initial direction I choose is positive. So it's traveling due east. It accelerates uniformly covering a distance of 550 meters in 10 seconds its initial velocity is 5 right so now we need to write out what we've got initial velocity vi is 5 it's and it's vf we don't know it's displacement delta x is 550 and our time delta t is in seconds and it's 10 seconds and they want to know what is the acceleration okay now we have an equation if we look at our equations we've got vf equals vi plus a delta t we've got vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a delta x we've got delta x equals vi t plus a half a delta t squared and we have got delta x equals vf plus vi over 2 delta t.
Right, so what are we looking for? We don't have VF. So anything that has VF in it, we're not using. So we're not using that one and we're not using that one. Right, do we have, we don't, and we're not using that one. Ah, so it leaves us with one equation. So we're looking at delta x. So I'm going to change color here just so that you can make it, make it easier for you to see my working. So we're going to go delta x is equal to vit plus a half a delta t squared. Now some people like to rearrange originally because we're solving for a and some people like to substitute in. I find that students tend to do better when the numbers are already in before they rearrange. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go 550 meters equals initial velocity of 5 times by the time of 10 plus a half times by a, that's what we want, and the time again is 10 squared. Right, so we're going to go 550, we'll do it slowly, you can probably do it faster than this, 5 times 10 is 50 plus a half times by a times by 100. So if we take this 50 across we subtract, so we've got 500 is equal to half well, half of 100 is just 50A, okay, because I took the 50, took it across, becomes 500, and now what do I do? I divide both sides by 50, cancel, 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 leaves a 1. So therefore the acceleration is 10 meters per second squared, and remember acceleration is a vector, so we have to put the direction, and since this is positive, we know that it's traveling east. Right, see that wasn't so bad, you just need to always, always, always grade 10s, even my grade 12s, I make them write down all the variables, and I make them write down all the values for those variables, and then they go look on their formula sheet, which you will have, and they choose the equation, and then they just plug it in, super easy. Let's do another example. A bus is traveling west, starts from rest, moves in a straight line with a constant acceleration. It travels 40 meters in 40 seconds. And they want us to 1. Calculate its acceleration, 2. Its final velocity, and 3. At what time the bus will have covered half the distance. So let's start with the acceleration. So again, here is your bus. Your bus. Okay, it's a bigger block this time. Obviously if you can draw better than I can, you can draw. Okay, then at this time it's traveling west, so we're going to make west positive. Okay, you can choose either way. It starts off with an initial velocity of zero, because it starts from rest. It moves at a constant acceleration. It travels, delta x is 40 meters, 40 meters in 4 seconds. Time is 4 seconds. Okay, and we want A. So if you realize, you might realize that we're actually going to be using the same equation we did last time, but again, just to make sure, I'm going to show you. Do we have VF? No. So we VF is equal to VI plus A delta T. We've got VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2A delta X. We've got delta x equals vit plus a half at squared. And we've got delta x is equal to vf plus vi over 2 delta t. And again, do you see that we don't have a vf here and we want a? So all the equations of the vf we can cross out. Okay, please don't go crossing them out on your formula sheet because you might need them for next question. Just ignore them. So now we're going to obviously be using delta x is equal to vit plus a half at squared. Now again, I'm just going to change ink color so you can see where I'm writing. So delta x equals vit plus a half, half at squared. Okay, do we have delta x? Yes, we do. It is 40. The initial velocity is zero, which is wonderful, because that means that we're going to get zero times by the time is four, plus a half times by a times by four squared. Awesome, 
because then that goes away because 0 times 4 is 0. Okay, so we've got 40 is equal to a half times by 16 times by A, which is 8A is 40. So therefore A is going to be 5 meters per second squared. Have I finished? No, I haven't because acceleration is a vector. It is a vector and therefore I need direction. Therefore my acceleration is 5 meters per second squared waist. You can waist. Right, excellent. So now we know that acceleration is 5 meters per second squared waist. Now let's do the second part. It's final velocity. Now acceleration we know is 5 meters per second squared waist. Let's go through it again. You would have already, obviously you don't need to rewrite this, but I do because it's a new page. So our initial velocity is 0. Our final velocity is what we want. Our acceleration now we know is 5. Our change in time is 4. And our displacement is 40. So equations of motion, Vf is equal to Vi plus A delta T. Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2A delta X. Delta X equals Vit plus a half AT squared. And delta X equals Vf plus Vi over 2 delta T. Now, do you see that we could either use the first one because we've got the initial velocity, we've worked out the acceleration and we've got the time. We could use the second one because we've got the initial velocity, we've got the displacement and we've got the acceleration. We couldn't use the delta x and we can use the third one. But here's the thing. I'm a little bit scared to use this because what happens if I'd made a mistake with that? If I'd made a mistake with my acceleration and I used it in these two equations, then I'll just be compounding my error. So let me explain what my thinking is. My thinking is if I can find my final velocity using the variables that they gave me, the initial velocity, the time, and the displacement, change in displacement, then I think that that is a safer bet than using my acceleration. Obviously, if there's no other way of getting it, then that's what we'll use. But in this case, do you see that I can use the delta x equals vf plus vi over 2 delta t because I've been given my delta x, it's in the information, it's 40 meters. I've been given the change in time, it's 4 seconds. We know the initial velocity is zero, so I can solve for the VF. So I'm going to use the third equation. There's nothing wrong with using the others. I just like to be safe. So delta X is equal to VF plus VI over 2 times by delta T. So we've got the delta X is 40 equals VF is what we're trying to find out. Our VI is naught over 2 times by the change in time, which in this case is 4. So we first take over the 4, so 4 times 40 is 160, is equal to VF, oh my word, I just times when I'm supposed to divide. Shame. Sorry guys, I'm a little bit tired. So let's try that again. In color and read using this pretty pink. So when we times it on this side, we divide on the other side. So it's 40 divided by 4 is 10. So 10 is equal to VF over 2. We therefore are times in both sides by the 2. So our final velocity is going to be 20 meters per second. And are we finished? No, we're not, because velocity is a vector. So since velocity is a vector, what do we need to do? We need to give it a direction. In this case, the direction is again west. Why is it west? Because it's positive. Right, so now we've worked out its acceleration and its velocity. Let's move on to the third part. The third part is, at what time will the bus have covered half the distance? 
Okay, so we know the acceleration is 5 meters per second squared. We know the final velocity is 20 meters per second, but that was at 40 meters. Okay, now it says at what time? So let's think about what we know. We know that the initial velocity is 0. We know the acceleration is 5. The displacement now is half of the 40. So the displacement is 20 meters and we want to know the time. We want to know the time. So again, let's see what our equations are. We've got Vf is equal to Vi plus A delta T. Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2A delta X. Uh, delta X equals Vi T plus a half A T squared and delta x equals vf plus vi over 2 delta t. Right, again, do we have the final velocity? We do, but we only have the final velocity at 40 meters. We don't have the final velocity at 20 meters. So we cross out vf, vf, and vf. So what are we going to be using? We're going to be using again our delta x is equal to vi plus VIT plus a half AT squared. So delta X is equal to VIT plus a half AT squared. Right, what is our delta X? In this case it's 20. The initial velocity is 0, so this goes away. So we're left with a half times by 5 times by T squared. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to times by 2 and divide by 5. So we go 20 times by 2 divided by 5 is going to equal t squared. So that's 40 divided by 5, which is 8 equals t squared. And then we use our calculator and we find the square root of 8. So the time is going to be 2.83 seconds. 2.83 seconds. Now our grade 10, so the reason we did this and the reason they asked for half the distance is because a lot of students would automatically go, oh, well they've traveled half the distance, therefore they've traveled half the time. But what you need to realize is that this bus is accelerating and because it's accelerating, the change, the velocity is changing all the time. So therefore it is not going to be exactly half the time. Also, note that there is no direction. Why? Because time is a scalar. We haven't learned how to travel back in time yet, so as far as we know, time always goes forwards and time is a scalar, which is 2.83 seconds in this example. Right, so now you've learned how to use your equations of motion. Please practice this. They are such good tools to use. Please make sure you always write down your variables and then choose the appropriate equation. Thank you, grade 10s. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.